all of these exercises, all of these sensory experiences nowadays are being implemented in everything. That's where the misunderstanding happened. When you are bringing yourself to the character, especially in method acting, you have to search for different personalities that we all have. We have to search for outside of the way that we behave in everyday life. For as long as you're staying with the personality, which is the first one that you go to, is going to be a one note monologue, is going to be a one note character. The true self and the natural way of being or the comfortable way of being is not enough for the character to become interesting. We do not want to allow ourselves to be expressive because that is being viewed as being over the top. And rather than accept that we are fearful of going there because we are not used to those other personalities that we might have inside of us, then we find justification to why we're not going there by saying, oh, but reading the text or reading the monologue, what I interpreted this character is doing is to just be seated in one way which is one monotone way of doing things, which automatically suggests that that actor in this case is judging the character. When we are judging the characters as actors, we will not get to become bold or risky or living, truthful, sensory experiences in the given circumstances of the script. Taken into consideration, the place. Where is the place? Once we start with the reality of what is, so if I were to now start a monologue, I would take into consideration this space, which has all these beautiful film scenes from different movies, to be able to make all the observations that I did. There's a picture of the movie, The Usual Suspects, with Gabriel Byrne, whom I met a long, long time ago. It's giving me a different sensation. Using all of the observations, the first line of the monologue is gonna come out of my observation of all of the things then you allow to come in the imagination, the training of the imagination is of such importance as an actor that at any time you can allow the imagine of the circumstances of the play. So we never just have one singular thought in our head as a character. The personal, the imaginative, of the fictional characters from the play. So the location and the physical place are so important to your behavior. And only when your behavior is made specific by you, that's already putting me in a state of mind where if I were to start the first line of the monologue, I have this to come from, filled in life that I'm already feeling happening, the line and the monologue is going to come out of. And I'm going to call out and I'm going to say, Treple, Treple. He walks in front of me. His steps grow softer and softer. How does that make me feel that he's not paying attention to me anymore? That's going to change the way that I say the next line. You are interpreting it as if you're speaking with someone. Even if that person doesn't respond, you have to imagine that they are somehow responding. It doesn't have to be in words. You can also interpret or you can also make up words that you're imagining they're saying back to you. This is all work that's being done moment to moment to moment by combining the personal with the imaginary of the script. And not only will it help you as an actor to be able to be active and to create credible character to the people watching, but you will also create credible location.
people watching or the camera watching is not just going to see an actor doing a monologue. You have to put everything in practice. You have to move and you have to feel, not based on I'm going to have feelings. Therefore, I have to have emotions. The emotions come out the same way as the lines of the monologue of the need to achieve an objective, a goal, a sensory experience for myself, which starts to look like that of a human being, because that's what we would do in real life. We react using our senses to everything. The reason why I knew to come to sit in the chair is because I saw there was a chair. If my senses were not involved in my decision to where I'm going to sit, if I didn't use my vision to see where I was going to sit, I could sit next to the chair and fall on the ground and break my back. But in everyday life, we respond with our senses to everything that we do. It's just that we're not conscious of those responses and we're not conscious every minute of the day exactly how we respond sensorially but as actors we have to become observant so we can train our senses to respond the same way that they do in everyday life to the fictional situations in the stories that we tell and it's also so exciting because not only does it help for actors to become more active, if you're watching the trial, the Alec Murdoch trial, which I don't want to go into it right now, but when you're watching the prosecution in trying to bring facts to what they believe their side of the story is to what happened, they are using the witnesses that they have and they're not just letting them sit in the chair and tell their story they're having them get up and they're having them demonstrate with their bodies what they saw what happened how did this happen did it happen like this was the body like this was the body turned halfway was the head down more what happened to the hands Everything is being demonstrated by lawyers in practice with their witnesses because that is what will grab audiences. In the case of the jurors, which happen to be the audiences that they're trying to convince of their side of the story, the case. And the other side of the story, the defense attorneys, they're doing the same thing. They can express themselves, they can show because that is so much more vivid for the audiences, for the jurors, in convincing them. They're creating sensory experiences, relive that what they are saying. And that's what this is about. They're doing it now when you're watching house renovation shows. Why would they stage the house? They're staging it because they want to create a sensory experience. They're putting a sofa, they're putting the candle, they're putting the light, they're putting the pillows with different accents because they want to make the place as livable, as credible to be lived in. So when the client walks into the door, they're not just going to see an empty space because it doesn't matter how beautiful the house is going to be. If it's just an empty space, it's not going to create any kind of emotions for anybody because there's no sensory experience for them if there's nothing there for them to be able to connect to they can look at the color of the pillow and that might just remind them of something from their own personal life that might just remind them of something from their own childhood they will have a sensory experience by completing the location with as many palpable objects so their senses their sight can be taken by the pictures on the walls the smell of the candle because that will give them a smell of home of cozy of intimacy of family so all of the tools of acting are being used in everything else in life and not only that but they will make you live life so much more vividly so much more Passionately, happy celebration of life.